Welcome back to the vlog. Um, so I'm heading home on Saturday. That means I've got four days left here in Girona. Four days, which is four more rides. I can't believe how quick that's gone. It genuinely feels like last week when I came. I'm even going to miss that ride out of Girona, but uh, today, today I'm out for about three hours again, so like 90, 95 kilometers, and I'm gonna do four uh, 15 minute tempo intervals. So I plotted out a route today, which has got a few, a few 10 or 15 minute climbs in, so I can do my intervals on those climbs. Right is wrong instead, I was too young. So I came out riding in all black today, and I am very much regretting it. We've got a serious overheating situation going on right here. And I didn't understand that you... So I'm about to start going up this climb here. And this climb, once you go up it uh, and start descending, you descend right down into the coast. I love doing this descent, it's so fun. It's probably one of my favourite climbs here, and it probably is my all-time favourite descent here. Unfortunately, I can't enjoy the climb up because I've got to go hard up it but I'll enjoy the descent. <laughs> Climb done, interval completed. Now it's time to enjoy the descent. Hopefully, hopefully it's dry all the way down. There's a few wet patches on the way up. The wet bits just spoil the fun. <laughs> Arrived at the coast, although it's it's pretty dead. Like there's not a lot goes on at this time of the year, and it's cloudy by the coast. Man, I'm going back to Girona. Is bleeding, oh, and your heart's bleeding. This is Playa Daro, which is the uh, the coastal town, which, well, the beach town where all the tourists come to. In this summer, this place would just be packed with tourists. So I guess it's good for us cyclists that the roads are quiet at this time of the year. On the ride out this morning, there was a bit of a headwind. Not much of a headwind, but you could definitely feel that there was a headwind. But then since I got to the coast back there and turned around, and heading back north up towards the city, there's a slight tailwind all the way back. Coming to the end of the ride now, just arriving back in Girona. Uh, I didn't really pull the camera out too much on the way back because the sun was behind me and I've learned from previous days when the sun's behind you, don't film because you can't see a thing. And I was motor pacing behind a lorry for a mile or two there coming back into the city. And I wanna say, before you all start giving me a hard time about it, I know that road really, really well. It's literally just a straight road back into Girona, a straight main road. No traffic lights, no junctions. It's as straight as they come. You can check it out on Strava. And also, I didn't get that close to uh, to the back of the lorries. There was plenty of time for me to break had I needed to. It was just a bit of fun. I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you're really, really experienced. Like I've trained behind the scooter before, so I've I've done motor pacing training before, so I know I know the dangers of it and I know how to avoid those dangers. It was a bit of fun to end a good ride. I want to address something that I keep getting asked. And that thing is, Cameron, why don't you shave your legs? Uh, the question keeps cropping up in the comments, like quite a lot actually. And I thought it was quite an obvious reason, but maybe maybe a lot of people don't know this. Um, so yes, I shave my legs, but we're currently, we're currently in the winter. And typically in the Northern Hemisphere during the winter, training involves the use of these leg warmers. Pretty much from when you stop racing in like September, October time, until you start racing again in February, that whole period of time you're training in, in leg warmers. And it's just it's just pointless to shave your legs. It's just a pointless thing to do. That There's no reason to do it. The pros don't do it. So I hope that answers the question, do you shave your legs? Yes, I shave my legs when I'm racing, but not during the winter. I didn't have any clean socks, so Castelli is. It's very, very close today in being able to wear a t-shirt. There's a tiny bit of wind in the air. I reckon if there was no wind, I could get away with a t-shirt. So apparently, 
apparently there's this place in the old town which uh, which is famous or, or which is known for its churros. I think the word's churros, it's those like pastry things that you dip in chocolate. I think that's what they're called. I hope that's what they're called. I've never, I've never ever tasted a, a churro before, but I like pastry and I like chocolate, so I'm bound to like them. So the mission is to find the churro shop and get some churros. Oh, you're joking me. This is the place, but it's shut. Absolute devastation. It's like 4 p.m. in the afternoon, so I'm gonna go and do some work for an hour or two, then go back to that shop and hopefully it'll be open. Here we go, I got, a small, I got a small bag of churros with a couple of uh, chocolate ones and a couple of just plain ones. First off, I'm gonna try the plain ones. It tastes like a crunchy donut, not a Krispy Kreme one, like those fresh ones that they make. That's really nice, I'm a fan of that. And now for the chocolate one. All right, the chocolate was dark chocolate. I'm more of a fan of uh, of milk chocolate, but it was still it was still nice. But I actually think I prefer the plain ones. So overall, the first try of a churro gets a thumbs up from me. 